Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about Luxo and the massive dip that we just saw in the market. If you like this kind of content, you should definitely like, comment, and subscribe, and watch this video to the end so you can see the full gist of what we're about to give you. But I need you to remember something. This is not financial advice, and we don't accept any liabilities for losses that you incur. Everything here is just for research and use purposes. So with that in mind, you should enjoy the content of this video. Now, we're gonna be talking about Luxo. Luxo, it just had a huge drop, a 37% drop, and in total a 50% drop as of, let's say, uh, a 50% drop as of, let's say, uh, a month, right? So a lot of people are scared. They're like, we're in uncharted territory. What's happening? There's like this big FUD. And, you know, I wouldn't personally be too fudded out for one reason. I'm about to explain why. A, look at our market cap. We're still really small. And look at our supply. Still very small. And as you can see here, you know what I mean? Like, fundamentally, the project hasn't changed. It's still the same project. It's still the same Luxo that you guys were jumping in at $20 ago or at 40 bucks or at this price or at that price. It's still Luxo. We're not here for the short-term game. We're here for the long-term. You know, when I, when I called this project, when I put it onto the radar of a lot of people, it's because I, I, I had uh, the gut feeling that it would be another Ethereum in the future. So the reality is that would you have held Ethereum if it dropped from 40 bucks to 20? Very likely. So this isn't very different, especially considering that how small the supply is and this right here, the volume. The volume is up 1,400% in one day, meaning that even though the actual price of Luxo dropped 37 or 40% in 24 hours, the volume, the total amount of money trading in Luxo is 1,400% up, meaning that someone bought this dip. If it was low volume and the price dropped, that would be something that's a little bit more sketchy. But the reality is the volume went up, which leads me to believe that a large player has bought a shit ton of Luxo. And the retail foam, uh, FUD, like everyone's selling and panicking, they bought that from you. Very likely they bought that from you because the reality is there's only 15 million coins. So when you sell your Luxo, you got to factor in the fact that there aren't a lot of coins. So if someone buys that whole dip on you, that's a lot of, that's, that, that, that's a lot of coins that you won't necessarily be able to get again, especially if the price rockets back up because of how small the supply is. So if a whale did accumulate this dip, that means that he is going to buy as much as he can at this price, and then he's going to push it out of, out of the hands of the retail investor because a lot of people got in early, and that's very real, you know? So a lot of retail people got in at the Rico, and they probably didn't let it go. And then a lot of traders, they probably sold on the way down from $28, but when you're selling all the way down from $28, someone's buying that. It isn't just something that happens overnight. There was a look at that volume spike here. I'm looking at the technical analysis, by the way, and look at how scary that is. Most people would panic when they see that. But when we saw that with Bitcoin from 60K to 30K, most people were buying. This is the same thing. And what's crazy is the fact that I did not expect it to break into scenario two or three. But three isn't likely. Two, it looks like this might be the beginning of where we're going to bottom out and then start going back up. But here's what I wanted to mention. Look at the size of that volume spike right here. One shot, one dude just dropped 18 million, bought up the whole thing right there. It's a lot of money considering how small Luxo's market cap is. So someone bought in. And we also haven't factored in the fact that Mt. Gox is dumping Bitcoin to pay out its insurances and uh, shareholders that have already invested into the company from a long time ago. That's 150,000 Bitcoin. It's a lot of money. That's like $8 billion that has basically been like taken out. And that's part of why we're hurting right now. It's because a large Bitcoin sell off from one of the world's largest exchanges of the past is selling its remaining Bitcoin in chunks and it's pushing the price down. And you know what the reality is, is when they're selling that Bitcoin, someone's buying it. Otherwise, guess what? They wouldn't be able to pay out their shareholders and their insurances and the SEC and whoever they have to. So don't be too fudded out. This is just a normal part of a, of a market cycle. Now, naturally, people will get 
you know, a little bit uncomfortable. Numbers should only go up. And I agree, because bears are communist. And bulls are capitalists, right? But let's just uh, let's just let's just assume that you need both to function in a perfect market cycle because if it only goes up it won't make any sense it's got to go down sometimes so we saw it hit its all-time high and now we see the correction and we're settling relatively close to previous highs but we haven't broken out of like let's say our our trend here you know like this was the bounce what's interesting is even though i drew out this map from way before in scenario two Look at where we ended up settling on this bounce as of today. We're right roughly around the point in this second region here in scenario two, meaning that if this bounce goes well, we're going to continue back onto this trend afterwards. I don't see us breaking over here. And if we do break over here, then we'll probably settle somewhere in like the 10, 8, $4 range. But I would say this isn't likely not unless the whole market dumps. Like if Bitcoin were to dump to 40K or 35K again, then we would see this probably drop to about five, six bucks. And then in which case, many people would load the dip on Luxo. Personally, I'm not too worried. And this is why. This is why we had that big scare. An update on the roadmap. So Fabian Volgesteller basically pulled out a video or rather pulled out an article explaining that there's been a lot of requests to get an update on the mainnet roadmap. And this article is just gonna shed some light. So originally they were planning on launching in Q4. I mentioned it on this channel that it's gonna be either Q4 or early in Q1. But right now, as it stands, I'm thinking it's it, it will be a Q1 to Q2 launch in that spread. It's gonna be probably within the first six months of the year. And that's why I'm not sure if we're going to be experiencing the same uh, bull slash bear cycle we've seen previously. I'm thinking that because so many people are going to be trying to sell in December and January, we might not actually see the same moon November and like, uh, like big December movements that we expect. We might even be suppressed in those months. And that suppression will cause basically a, a, a consolidating market. And then we might see the market start to boom again in spring. So that's my call for the general market. We might not see a big December and November this year because too many people are expecting it. And what have I said about overcrowded trades? When there's too many people expecting the same thing, that's a good sign that it's not gonna happen because whales don't want you to win because if you win, they lose. So if November and December end up bearish months, which is not, the usual trend for cryptocurrencies. Expect spring to flourish with the flowers. That's just how it's gonna be most likely. And if Luxo ends up launching in Q1, late Q1, early Q2, which is what I think is very likely, that'll probably be one of the catalysts of the bull market if it continues and we end up in a super cycle, which ends up periods where we have big bullish momentum bearish consult bearish drops and consolidations and then bang but the general market will always be going upwards if we're in a super cycle that means that it wouldn't be as simple as just like oh the market goes up and then we wait four years like we always do it's like that's very unlikely we're not likely to see that same pattern play out because it's played out three or four times already you really expect it to play out again if it always did that, then guess what? Everyone would just repeat it and they would win automatically, right? I think this is the year we're gonna deviate from that. And if it is the year that we're gonna deviate, expect expect spring and summer to be more, um, more uh, profitable. That's what I personally think. Now going back to this article, what's the current status? We're in the L15 testnet. And more or less what they're saying is that like, even though they're developing on proven technologies, they're also coming out with a lot of new concepts that have not been developed yet. And you guys got to remember something. This is launching as ETH 2.0 and NFT 2.0. They are launching and they're adding in new features that have never been added to any blockchain yet. Not even Ethereum, which is, Ethereum, which is supposed to be Ethereum 2.0. Do you really think that this is going to be something that just happens and that's it? No. This is going to be something where they have to test it rigorously. Because if you look at Ethereum, why did Ethereum fail? Or why is it failing? 
as a, as a, as a token because they launched with inefficiencies and they launched with the inability to scale to the level that they expected. And because of that, Ethereum has gas fees that are fucking insane right now. It's insane. How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you expect these people to rush perfection? The Luxo team knows what they're doing. They launched Ethereum. Well, rather they didn't launch Ethereum, but they made all the applications that made Ethereum valuable, like DeFi, NFTs, and Web3. So if Fabian could tackle all that, assume he's likely going to be the guy who tackles the next step very well. But he's not going to do it by rushing a product out so people could get monetary gains on their Luxo. It's just not, just not good sense, good business sense. The reality is the guy is going to make an excellent product in his own time, and the people who are patient enough to actually ride, ride the wave will be able to experience the full, uh, the full uh, scale of what it will be worth eventually. Because someone like this wouldn't just be talking shit because he pretty much coded half the space. If it wasn't for his, his, his authoring of most of these token standards, crypto would be bullshit. It would be done. It wouldn't be able to go past what it is. This is the next logical stage. So what's coming next? First, first of all, what they, what they want to do is they want to make sure that the stability of the network, like they're comfortable with the stability of the network so that it could scale. What, basically solving Ethereum's problem. Second, they need to do some code cleanup and API finalization. Third, they need to run an audit on the architecture before launching for their mainnet, ideally more than one. So they might need one, two, or three audits, meaning that the code is good and it could handle what it's supposed to, which is very important. And then finally, they're gonna prepare for the mainnet launch by switching the LYXE token to the LYX token. So just like switching to the token standard that's that's needed. Now that should more or less like uh, give you an idea of why it's going to take a little bit longer because they want to make sure it's done properly. You know, like imagine, imagine you're trying to rush something that is going to be doing the next level of crypto, the next level of blockchain. You can't just launch it as a sloppy, uh, sloppy, ill, ill, uh, ill progressed, butchered piece of shit. You know, they got to make it good. Otherwise, it has no value. Otherwise, what's the point of going through all this? So I have faith. The expected timeline, as they said here, uh, I'm thinking maybe it could be like, uh, I'm thinking it could be Q1, Q2. And they mentioned here, look, they're setting up the network and they're trying not to make it like the Ethereum's infamous, oh, in two weeks. Oh, in two weeks. Oh, in two weeks. You see right here? It's always hard to predict when things will be ready. So they don't want to give us like a oh, in two weeks kind of thing. Because if they're constantly delaying the mainnet or constantly delaying their upgrades and their forks and their improvements, which are time consuming and not exactly easy to do, they're going to lose. They're going to basically start their journey like Ethereum did, which was constantly pushing back and not respecting any of the time constraints that they constantly put out. So at least he's being real. He's telling us like, yo, it could take longer, it could take long, but when it's launched, it'll be ready. And that's it. It won't be like Ethereum, which is constantly telling you, oh, it'll be done by this time. And then, you know, they, they don't do it because Ethereum's notorious for that. Then you look at the current development. They're saying first half of next year depends on the stability and the results of the audits. Uh, that's basically, that's basically what, what, what they're saying here. And that, that, that's why I wanted to get this video out and let you guys know what's up. It's going to be basically one of the other things too, that I wanted to mention too, is that our Patreon members who started coming on, they actually got this news a little bit earlier than the people who are going to get it on the YouTube, probably just like earlier in the day compared to how you're going to get it in the night. But until our Discord is open on our Patreon and connected to it, because we're still setting up the moderators and the infrastructure to make sure that the channel is valuable for the people who pay the fee, we're gonna make it so that even though it's not available, you'll be able to get all your like all your major news updates like this, for example, 
a little bit before you could get it on the YouTube. So anyone who was subbed to our Patreon and is part of it, they got this information a little bit earlier today. And at the very least, it's like they were informed before, let's say, the average bear who was waiting for this YouTube to come out. Now, I also wanted to say it was, it was a successful Patreon launch and a successful conference that happened this weekend. Uh, to all the people who supported us and showed their love, we appreciate you. We appreciate you, the viewer. Uh, we're going to be releasing the conference on the YouTube, but by segment, meaning that you'll be getting it 15 to 20 minutes at a time, released over the course of the next month or two on both, confer both conferences. If you want the full thing, full access to it, and to be able to watch it as, as, as it is in its entirety, you'll have to sub onto our Patreon, and on the Patreon, you'll be able to get uh, more educational videos that are gonna be coming out as exclusives that are gonna be basically only segments on the YouTube at a time. So for people who really want to get that information, like the full gist of it early and in one place and not have to wait for it, it's going to be very valuable. As well as the fact that you'll get those little news updates on our Patreon and you'll be able to get more as we um, evolve it. Because we're still learning how, how we could use the platform to its full capability. So while we discover how to use the Patreon to its full capability, bear with us because it's our intention to make it something that's going to be awesome for anyone who decides they want to be part of it and once again to everyone who did uh, start becoming a patron we definitely appreciate you and we we will be offering a lot more on that platform soon so I guess that's more or less it I'm gonna wrap up everything I had to say about Luxo now and um, just remember that amount of volume it doesn't just happen out of nowhere me personally, I think it's someone big buying the dip because they understand that if the mainnet gets delayed, a lot of people might get fudded and sell. So somebody bought it. That FUD was, was basically put out and then someone bought that FUD. Look at that volume spike right here. That doesn't just happen overnight. That Well, it did happen overnight, but like that doesn't just happen for no reason. Someone's involved. That was an insider trade, very likely, because it wouldn't just boom. Something happened there. It's not as simple as like, oh, it's FUD and uh, I got a fear for my life. It's like, no. Somebody bought that and they're probably going to continue to buy whatever people are selling for cheap. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care.